Ranked in Apex Legends has never been sweatier, and the legend you choose matters more than any other mode. Today, we're gonna rank the best legends for Apex rank, but unlike my seasonal ranking videos, I'm gonna be harder on all the legends as rank prioritizes winning and having enough eliminations for it to matter. I'm splitting my ranking into two lists, one for those who are rookie through gold, and then for everyone else who is platinum through pred. There's a lot of legends who are great at lower skill levels due to the level of competition, but they falter when you are knocking on the door of those upper ranks. Some legends are better on certain maps, and I will make mention of that as we go as well. We begin with the Assault Legends, and Bangalore for both lower and upper skilled ranks is pretty incredible, and she's gonna start us off strong in S tier. Honestly, it's because all of her abilities are useful, and she has a play style that is very flexible between offense and defense, while also being a team player, which is huge when ranked, really requires you to quickly adapt. Both her tactical smokes and ultimate are gonna be great for this. Regardless of your skill level, though, you need to utilize her to the fullest, but note that for less skilled players, be very cautious about over smoking. Her smokes can be a huge issue and sometimes hurt the team more than help if you are using them poorly, which can be the case in those rookie through gold lobbies. Bangalore is also a much better or needed pick if you are playing on Storm Point due to the openness on that map. Fuse continues to be an all around great in Apex and is maybe a little slept on when it comes to rank. His ability to apply constant pressure via his tactical knuckle cluster is greatly welcomed. This means you can control the battlefield without needing to rely solely on grenades, which are not going to come back after you do use them. He's going to get an A placement regardless of the rank you are in since he is pretty and the skill required to use him is also fairly low. I think the biggest problem with Fuse is going to be what makes him unique, and it is his reliance on grenades to make his passive useful. As soon as you run out, you don't have a passive anymore, and in general, the legends with better passives are the better legends to use. Fuse gets more viability on smaller maps like Olympus or World's Edge, and with how many caustics there are around these days, the ability to cluster those traps is also pretty huge. Dropping down to the bottom, we are going to have Ash in D. This is both for Rooks to Gold and Plat to Pred, she is really just not worth using at the moment. Her tactical is pretty weak. Yes, it can trip some people up and her upgrades do make it a little bit better, but it's very hard to recommend a tactical that snares an enemy for a few seconds over something like the previously mentioned knuckle clusters. Her passive can be viable to help you figure out where rotations are and avoid enemies, but I find this to be more of a convenience tool. And if she has any viability, it does lie in her ultimate phase breach, which can be great to push to high ground and gain positioning. Mad Maggie, since her season 20 buffs and upgrades is an absolute absolute sleeper of a legend. For me, she is by far the legend not being spoken enough about. For ranked playmaking, her drill and ultimate can be a real menace. I rank her in A tier for the lower ranks and S for those that are more skilled. The main reason for this slightly lower rank for rookies two goals is because she does require a certain level of game sense and skill to fully utilize her abilities by pushing enemies and taking fights. Her wrecking ball upgrade of leaving thermites and the buff of hitting enemies multiple times is honestly so good to not use in ranked when players are less stationary and trying to hold up in buildings. Our final Assault Legend is going to be Ballistic, who frankly is one of the worst legends in the game when it does come to ranked. I have him at D tier for both ranges of skill. He has some good combat capabilities, but his set of abilities are straight up just not needed. The third gun is rarely useful outside of the ultimate, pretty much meaning he doesn't really have a passive. The tactile is nice to get one enemy out of commission, but it's fairly easy to counter. And if you are in a multi-enemy fight, one, maybe two people getting the tactical on them isn't going to be as significant as a legend that can control space or move the entire squad. His ultimate is good, but mostly not needed. If you are using a legend just for the ultimate, I think it's kind of a throw. Moving to the recon legends, we are going to start off with what I think is not only one of the best recon legends right now, but also one of the strongest legends in the entire game, and it is the Hound. The increased awareness that you get, faster movement in the ultimate, and the tracking through their passive is going to be quite helpful in ranked when you need all of this intel. Even the White Raven will help you see where the closest team is, and this can mean you either avoiding fight to get better positioning or taking a fight to get some KP. The Hound is not as good as they once were, but with a lot of other legends also getting nerfs, there is more room for them in the meta. Also, the amount of Banglers and overall smoke usage means the ability to highlight all those enemies in red when you are in the ultimate, it's kind of crazy. Blood is S tier for the bottom and God tier for the upper skilled players. The slight difference is because I can see lower skilled players getting over reliant on scans and not being able to take full advantage of the ultimate like a more experienced player definitely could. There's not going to be any legend on my list that is more skill dependent than Crypto. Crypto for a lower skilled player who can't keep up, gets distracted easily, or 
just isn't fully aware of what is going on around them is going to greatly hurt the team, which means for the bronzes out there, he is in D tier. Crypto requires an insane amount of actions per minute. And yes, everything does rely on the drone, which is a problem. However, as soon as you understand how to remotely send out the drone in fights, look at the science to see who is around, aggro EMP, self EMP. There's just so much you can do to help your team out, making him a B tier legend for me. Even pinging the beacons remotely is going to help you get more awareness for those who are around you. And in ranked, when placement matters, being able to pick up the cards with the drone and remotely respawn players is also just so good to get those few extra placement points. Crypto is also a little bit better on larger maps when you can get a little bit more usage out of his drone. Seer is such an anomaly in Apex Legends. He was released in a crazy overpowered state and was kind of nerfed and went quiet for quite some time. He gained insane popularity as seasons passed and eventually saw another massive nerf, which put a massive wall on his capabilities. Seer is just too slow to gain intel and his abilities are just not good enough now. Yes, in ranked, you will be able to get that passive intel to see where rats are, but in all ranks, I put him in D tier because honestly, I just don't think he brings enough to the team. I'd take any other recon legend over him as well. Vintage has been fairly lukewarm since her release in season 14, but for rookie through gold ranks, I think she provides a lot to the team that can help them out, and she does get a B rating for those lower ranks. For one, her passive intel to see enemy shields and status and how many enemies are alive in that squad can be a huge determining factor whether or not you should be taking a fight as a lower ranked player, but her tactical movement is fairly slow compared to other legends. Her ultimate I also find can be nice in rank as games are slower and being able to constantly replenish your sniper over time and knowing that you have some long range pressure without needing to run a dedicated weapon is pretty awesome. For the masters out there though, I think she's more of a D tier legend as that passive intel isn't as needed and she just isn't as viable for the upper ranks. If you have seen my ranking videos before, you know that this is a new ranking system for me. If you enjoy this or you like my old way better, drop a comment down below as I really do value your feedback. I saw CarQ who covers Overwatch do this, so shout out to him for this format. For the skirmishers, my personal main is on deck and it is Pathfinder. Path has a lot of viability in all game modes, not just ranked, due to the fact that his grapple can carry a lot of scenarios. He's gonna get the double B placement because his hitbox is massive and while I do think the grapple and even zip lines are great for rotations, I don't think he provides enough to the team for utility. He is very flexible, which is definitely welcomed when you need to adapt quickly in ranked, but for the most part, there's other legends that bring more to the table. Wraith fits nicely in the middle or slightly on the lower end of my rankings at B for the lower and C for the more skilled players. Wraith, I think, lacks the overall usefulness that she used to have and that other legends can provide, but when enemy players are not as cracked with movement and hitting their shots, I think her tactical has a little bit more viabilities in those gold lobbies. And similarly, her portal will be better when you do have more time and capability to move around. When in upper ranks, I think she falters greatly while her reset possibilities are good. She has a very dated kit that is not going to bring the most to the team. Another legend with a very dated kit is going to be Octane. Octane is somewhat like Wraith where you will be able to get away a little bit more with his kit in lower rank. So I have him at C for rookie through gold and D for plat through pred. If this was a fun tier list, Octane would be at the top. But the fact is his stim gets you in trouble more than it's worth. And while the launch pad coming back every 90 seconds is awesome, it isn't really needed. And it's kind of something that reveals you way too much in end games. You are going to get absolutely beamed. Octane just doesn't have it anymore, which makes me sad. And I would look elsewhere for pure ranked viability. It's like slightly surprising to me that so many skirmisher legends are right in the middle of the pack, but when it comes to ranked, I think it's because movement in Apex Legends just isn't quite as much of a must-have as your ability to move around is more limited as the end games are way more crowded. Rev gets the B tier for lower and A tier for upper skilled lobbies. Revenant gets the middle placement solely due to his ability to flank and get to those harder to reach positions. Not to mention when you are forced to make a push play, Revenant in his ultimate is kind of a big deal to help soak up damage and keep the squad alive. A big drawback for him is going to be his size as he is a truck and fairly easy to hit. If this was earlier in the season, I would have him higher, but he did just see a bunch of recent nerfs. When it comes to the complete kit, I think Horizon has to be another legend who is very viable. I give her a B and A tier rating respectively. On one hand, lower skill players are going to have a harder time beaming a Horizon in her tactile lift, making it stronger, where in upper skilled lobbies, 
great players are going to be able to take advantage of her kit in a more aggressive way and to do a lot more with it. Horizon has massively benefited from maps with more verticality and buildings. This means World's Edge and Olympus. I will also give a mention to Horizon specifically for endgame ranked. When there's, say, three to five teams around, being able to drop that lift and get out of grenades and more specifically a caustic gas ultimate can easily mean the difference between a fifth place and a quick death or maybe a second place or even getting the win. Rounding out the Skirmisher Legends is going to be the long forgotten but still very useful Valkyrie. Valkyrie in terms of the larger meta has trickled out quite a bit but there's no denying it. Her rotational power for ranked Apex is going to be a huge deal in Game Maker. Specifically when you are in the lower ranks, being able to pop her ultimate and just fly over the entire battlefield means getting high ground, getting late game power positioning, or just bypassing some terrible rotations. She's a god tier pick for me for the bottom ranks and an A tier for the upper as I think in those upper or top ranks of Apex, you don't necessarily need her as much. And while she does bring all the rotational help in the world, you will want a more formidable legend that can control areas or provide more in teams of team fighting like a Conduit or a Bloodhound. I'll also mention that Valkyrie on Stormpoint is infinitely more useful than she is on a map like Olympus. It's now time for these support legends, and honestly, this category is stacked with game changers. I'm not gonna mention it every single time, but having any support legend on your team means anyone can craft the squad's banners, which alone probably should lift every single one of these characters to a soft C or B tier, as this will help minimize those huge losses or rack games because you couldn't run back to get those squad banners. Conduit, in my eyes, does require a fair amount of skill and attentiveness to really make the best use of her. However, she is crazy good. I give her an A ranking for the lower ranks and an S tier for the upper. Her tactical alone is enough to make or break fights as getting a free and very quick battery will not only help keep you alive, it's going to help you save shields, which absolutely is useful in ranked. Her ultimate will also let her control the battlefield and having a legend with both control and support properties just means a mountain of success. The only thing holding her back from god tier is going to be the fact that if you are a more passive, less combative team, you're not going to need her as much. The Gibster is an OG Apex legend legend, but when it does come to today's meta, he is still a fair pick in C tier for both upper and lower ranks. I think that since Gibraltar is a day one legend, his kit is a little antiquated and there have been a lot of legends introduced that can counter him. If you like a challenge and you are wanting a legend who can do a little bit of everything, then Gibraltar is a good option as his tactical dome can be a really big deal when you don't have any cover around and similarly, the ultimate is also pretty nice to force movement and get some relief. I also find that his gun shield is pretty good at poke farming without wasting shield cells, which in ranked is also very valuable. But even with all of this, something just does not quite feel right and it might be his massive size. Gibraltar is gonna be another legend with a little bit more viability, the larger the map you are on. Our next two legends viability greatly gets adjusted depending on the rank you are in. The first to talk about is gonna be Lifeline. Lifeline in the lower ranks is absolutely nuts. Her ability to revive players can massively change the game as less skill lobbies straight up have a harder time dealing with the remote revive. And if you can remove remotely revive your squad while dishing out damage, you can stall enemies advancements pretty easily. Her A rating in these lobbies is going to be supplemented by a B tier rating for those in upper skilled lobbies as the higher the rank you are, the better player shots get, the more they can do and the faster they can do it, meaning remotely reviving players is going to be a little bit harder to pull off. Regardless of the rank though, healing friendlies with the drone in combat is pretty nice and her care package isn't terrible either, although a little forgettable after the first one or two uses in the game. In a similar vein, but maybe not quite as useful as Lifeline, we are going to have Mirage. I've always said this, Mirage in a less skilled lobby, Rookie through Gold, will have a lot more success due to his overall capabilities being somewhat limited by the caliber of player you are going up against. I give him a B rating because of this. When you pop a Mirage ultimate or even his decoy and the player on the other side isn't as quick to identify who the real Mirage is, you have a lot more time to make plays and thus you have more time to survive in a pinch. However, for Plat Pred lobbies, I give Mirage a D tier rating and I honestly think there is next to nothing Mirage does bring to the table outside of maybe invisible revives, but the amount of times where an invisible revive is going to matter will be very few as generally in those upper skilled lobbies, players start and finish fights before you even have the time to make such a play. It is debatable, but if you want the most consistent ranked experience that will provide great placement points and help keep the squad moving at all times during match, you need to use Loba. I give Loba an S tier rating for the Rooks because honestly, if you can't shoot, no problem. Put your black market 
it down and your team will still be able to get some loot. Jokes aside though, being able to get more loot earlier on means less time spent wasting away in the early game, meaning more time rotating, getting better positioning, and winning more games. And then during the late game, especially in the upper skill lobbies when there's a ton of people around with laser beam accuracy, being able to put down a market, get more shields, and get more ammo and more utility items means you can actually play the game and you can also move from spot to spot via her bracelet, which is very nice when cover is minimal. I gave Loba an A rating for these higher caliber lobbies because I do think you can mostly forego this type of resource management if you are getting kills and playing well with your team. The last support legend to discuss is going to be Newcastle. I think Newcastle requires a fair amount of skill to execute well with him, so I give him an A rating if you are more skilled and a B if you are less so. Newcastle, I think, is one of the most complete legends in the game between team support with his passive, protecting the squad with a little movement with his tactical mobile shield, and some ultimate rotations via his castle wall that you can fortify and control areas. While the castle wall can get obliterated by a handful of legends, having that makeshift cover can be a game changer and it should not be slept on. Not to mention leaping to your team up to 70 meters away means way more play options to try and rotate and leap back or try to leap and start a revive right away. There are so many great legends in Apex Legends, but when it comes to ranked Apex Legends, I think the controller category of legends is probably gonna deliver the best results when it comes to making actual consistent gains. For one, everyone gets those ring console pings, meaning you can better predict where the end game is gonna be, and when you need placement, this is pretty huge. Caustic gets the double god tier placement for all skill levels, hopefully showing just how broken and insanely good he is right now. Caustic's gas saw both a nerf and a buff recently, where players can can more quickly regain movement by moving faster after getting hit by gas, but at the same time, this gas ramps up damage even faster. Now, Caustic's upgrades are great, allowing his ult to cover more area and when you can fortify and trap up a building to keep people away, it kind of means you get gifted free placement points. The only counter to Caustic gas is going to be Caustic himself. If you are looking to make the most out of every game, you really need to utilize a Caustic. I think he is great on all maps, but Caustic does have more viability when there are more buildings around so keep this in mind as well. A legend who was made for competitive Apex or even in our situation ranked is going to be Watson. Watson absolutely takes a ton of skill to learn how to execute well with her, but once you do understand her fence capabilities and really possibilities as a whole, she is a powerhouse legend. She gets an A rating for the lower ranks as there is a ton you need to actually know how to do from placing fences, when to gen, and where to go to make her kit actually usable. I think all this could be hard to get acclimated to. However, for the masters or wannabe masters, out there. She is an S tier rank pick. Her stalling capabilities are top tier and when she can replenish shields with her ultimate means she can not only control battles, she can support the team as well. Kind of like Newcastle, I think Watson is one of the most complete legends you can run in rank and her very small hitbox is something that I think many need to consider as well. It makes you a lot harder to get down. Rampart mixes together a nice amount of defensive and aggressive properties but her overall rank viability is a little bit lower. LMGs for the most part are not the meta. Yes, the L star is decent right now and as is the Spitfire, but these guns use too much ammo and oftentimes this is a big problem if the game lasts a little bit longer. The Volt and the Nemesis are simply just better overall as well. All this kind of means her passive is not the greatest, but her tactical to fortify up a building, boost damage output, and create some tactical playmaking is pretty solid. Her ultimate is an insane third party tool and when end games are packed with players, this thing absolutely can shine. I also love the ultimate as a way to break into buildings when there are a lot of people around playing a little bit more passively. This can be pretty clutch. Faltering from what she used to be is going to be Callus in her double B tier placement. Callus has a fair set of abilities for hybrid play with aggressive pushes via her ultimate, rotations with the ultimate, and then wiping and fortifying up a building with her tactical traps and her passive fortification. She is slightly positional dependent with buildings, but as a whole, she is a good legend who used to be much better. Let me know which ranked legend you are using the most. Hit that like button, check out this video for more, and I will see you in the next one. Happy gaming, legends.